Hey everyone, uh, Glenn Champion here, founder of EXP Realty. And today I'm excited to speak with Andy Coleman, a three-time icon agent out of ba uh, Boca Raton, Florida. And as I've kind of done a little bit of research, and you have been freaking knocking it out of the park <laughs> on rentals, like like not just a little bit, like a lot of like crazy volume you figured out. So this is going to be a fun podcast to hear that. Of course, I think you're also uh, really focused on maybe uh, even how you're you're growing your your revenue share organization EXP. But Andy, hey, welcome to the podcast. Hey, Glenn, thank you so much for having me. Yes, I um, picked up doing rentals basically right when I started real estate about three years ago. And um, yeah, everything's been like a blur since then. The, the three years have gone by so fast, but I've done about 500 deals, probably 98% of those being rental deals in my past three years. Wow. And so I always avoided rentals like the freaking plague. Um, and uh, I think you, you joined EXP. This is your first brokerage but you jumped in and this was where you won, cut your teeth, and now you've made it a big business. How did that all come about? Yeah, so it was crazy because I was a brand new agent in a brand new state. I had just moved to Florida like five years ago and I was doing some other stuff, uh, you know, running some other businesses. And I ended up getting into real estate back in October of 2019, about three years ago, did my first deal in December. And I realized back then it was I was kind of like a buyer's market, but as a new agent, I could I didn't have like a sphere of influence. You know, I had no network built up whatsoever. So I had to get creative on getting leads coming in. I didn't have like, you know, I grew up in Connecticut actually. Um, so that's I'm from the Northeast. And I didn't have this big network built up to where I can, you know, call my friends and family. So I had to get creative. And one of um one of the agents down here recommended I try rentals. And I'm I'm brand new and I'm like, oh, okay, let me give it a shot. So I start doing what's called any broker advertise. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but basically in our MLS, uh, we have something called any broker advertise. Yes. If it says yes, I'm allowed to advertise. Any property that I want, I could put it up, you know, anywhere I want. Me personally, I was doing Facebook Marketplace. So I would take a listing on the MLS and then I would advertise it courtesy of the listing brokerage, let's say like Remax, Keller Williams, or EXP, whatever it is. And then I would have these tenants call me. When they called me, I would kind of, you know, my, my whole goal was to get them set up on my MLS and to make them a client. I wasn't really focused too much on that property. And that's the way I built my whole entire business. It was, it's, I call it the any broker advertise strategy because I'm posting listings that technically aren't mine. I'm allowed to do it though. Um, the agents give me permission and then I get my clients that way. And then I start showing them all these rental properties and then I start closing all of these deals based on posting a listing that it wasn't even mine to begin with. Right. Well, and that's been the beauty, of course, of, uh, of, of IDX. And, and that I, I generated all of my early on leads because I was an early website, IDX, advertise, uh, you know, search, um, but didn't pull out individual listings uh, to, to promote, but, but the IDX, but that was back in 2002, 2003. So it sounds like... You've, you've figured out a niche, one, and then said, hey, if I go all in, what could this actually mean? What, what percentage now would you stay of the, we call it the uh, renter rep market, do you think you've been able to sort of pick up? So in terms of like percentage, because I'm in South Florida, so I'm in, I'm in Boca Raton. Um, that's like the area I live in. I basically do like a hundred mile or like maybe like a 60 mile radius from Boca. So I'm down in Miami, Fort Lauderdale, obviously Delray, West Palm, Jupiter, Port St. Lucie. I'm all over the place. So I don't know exactly the percentage of like, you know, amount of like deals that are being closed on a daily basis right now. But I just know that in terms of the amount of deals I'm doing, it's probably like, you know, 50 times the normal agent or probably more than that um, per year. Cause I did about 240 last year. And, you know, I, I honestly, I don't know how many rentals were actually closed. I do know we have about 17,000 on the market at any given time. Um, so I'm, I'm doing a good portion of those though, like just me alone. I'm doing a lot of them. So, um, 17,000 rental properties that are available that are, uh, available to be marketed because they're part of that, that pool of, 
of properties? From my MLS, yeah, about 17,000 total um, right now. We dipped down to about 5,000 in the heat of COVID, you know, when things got really bad, we had about 5,000 listings. So also I was doing this during like, you know, COVID was what, uh, February 2020, I think. And that's basically right when I started real estate. So I had to jump right in during one of the worst pandemics, like, you know, in the last whatever, 10, 15 years. And, you know, doing that, we lost a tremendous amount of properties. I believe when I started, we had something like 40,000 properties on the market at any given time. And then during probably, I would say, June of 2022 two or so, um, we probably had about 5,000. It it went all the way down to about 5,000. So the crazy part was every single agent and tenant was all fighting over the exact same properties. So we were literally getting, you know, 30 offers for some of these rental properties. So I had to develop a completely different strategy to eventually, I didn't do this in the beginning, but eventually like during the heat of the, the pandemic, I was actually doing offers before I would even see a property. So I I had them basically doing the credit background eviction report, rental application, proof of income, driver's license. I would write up these contracts to lease and I would send them out to as many properties as these tenants, my clients would like. And then if they get accepted, then I would go and show them the property. So I I developed a completely different strategy. Okay, sounds good. Because obviously at that point in time, uh, that people were really didn't care what the property looked at, like because they needed a place to live or what have you. And so it's like, yeah. hey, just give me a property. How do I get at the front of the line? I'll take it. It's what's the worst could happen. I've got a 12 month lease and then and I can move on to a different property. Yeah, they, they, they didn't care that much. I mean, some people would be a little bit picky, but for the most part, a lot of them were out of state, you know, like uh, New York, Massachusetts, uh, California, uh, Canada, like everybody was moving here. I think at the peak, we had about 950 people moving to South Florida on any given day. So all the properties got taken up and like the locals down here were kind of getting pushed out because the prices, the prices probably doubled for the rentals in Florida, like not even exaggerating. The average three bedroom, two bath probably went for right around $2,200, you know, right when I started real estate back in 2020, early 2020. And then it got up to around like 3,000, 3,200, you know, maybe a little bit more for the average three bedroom. So the prices, it, it just went nuts down here and it's recovering a little bit right now. But yeah, it was like a mad scramble for properties. So it was pretty crazy that I was able to do that many deals while we had this like 20, 30 offer situation for rentals. And don't get me wrong. I did also do house sales. You know, I did, um, I think I've done about 20 or so in my three years of real estate, but my focus was primarily on the rental market. And the whole goal of that was, you know, obviously it's great, fast cash right then and there. My personal average commission was around $2,000 per deal. I did charge a transaction fee though, which I can talk about a little bit later, um, which is a, a crazy brilliant tip for any agent that's doing rentals for transaction fees. If you charge a, you know, two, $300 transaction fee, you're going to make tens of thousands of dollars extra per year just by charging a fee. And I can, I can talk about that later, but yeah, basically for the most part, um, I focused on these rental deals and they were just flooding in because everybody wanted to move here and nobody wanted to buy a property. So all of these, uh, you know, renters, eventually their goal is to buy. That's their ultimate goal. They want to buy a property. So when they came down here, they wanted to rent, feel the market out, you know, get accustomed to Florida, figure out what area they wanted to be in. And primarily they wanted the prices of home purchases to come down. So for me personally, I don't even think I've reached like even close to my peak yet because all of my renters, they're going to turn into buyers over the next couple of years. Awesome. Now, I assume that when you first started this, you were searching the MLS, finding these available properties to market. You were going into Facebook and other places to actually put it in the marketplace, et cetera. Um, I'm a, now, or have you have you developed any sort of, I'm obviously, I assume you're doing at, at least an assistance doing this if you haven't incru- cre- uh, done some automation. How, what does that look like you know, then and how does it change today? Yeah. So basically, um, 
The market's less competitive now. That's that's the biggest change over the past couple of years. The market's less competitive. We have about three times as many properties as we did at the peak. So, you know, people are getting offers accepted three times easier than before. So now, you know, I don't have as much pressure putting in these offers. You know, it's, it's just a lot easier to get accepted. People can be a little bit more picky now. But um for me personally, I didn't really change too much. Like in terms of um, like the actual listings that I'm posting, the only thing I really changed, obviously the prices started to go up. So my average commission, it used to be about $800 per rental deal when I first started. And now I think last month I'm at like $2,200. So that's gone up tremendously. So the amount of, um, uh, you know, uh, dollars per hour that I'm making has, has basically almost tripled. Um, in the in the past three years, because just because the market down here, it just got so hot and the prices went up so high. So I can do the exact same amount of deals and make almost three times as much money just because the prices went so so high. So for me, you know, I'm still doing the same thing. I'm taking these any broker advertised properties, putting them up on Facebook Marketplace and, you know, other places as well, obviously. Um, and then I'm just getting leads coming in every single day. I could be getting up to 200 leads per day. So, you know, I, I, on a really good day, uh, maybe 200 leads will come in per day. And obviously I'm not closing that many deals. So the turnover rate is, is not the best, you know, percentage wise. If, if let's just say on average, I'm bringing in, let's just say 75 leads per day. Um, I'm not getting, you know, even 75 people accepted per month. So a lot of these people that are reaching out to me, they, they don't want the property that they're reaching out to me about. So like, that's not the goal. So the whole goal is to get them set up on the MLS and, you know, by talking to them, I get them set up on my MLS and then they're going to start seeing other properties that they like. Um, that really honestly hasn't changed that much in the past, you know, three years. The only thing I did really change was now I do have an assistant. So in my first three years, completely solo, you know, agent, no assistant, no transaction coordinator, no I was doing it all alone. I was probably working about 16 hours a day at my peak. Um, I could even go back into it a little bit earlier on in my career. My first year, I didn't really take it as serious. I was only probably working, I would say five or six hours per day. And then, you know, I only did about 80,000 in commission my first year. Second year, I started taking it a little bit more serious. I had a moment. Um, it was funny with my with my girlfriend. Um, she basically motivated me to start working harder because my first year of real estate, I wasn't sure if Wait, I liked 16, 16 hours isn't enough. <laughs> Well, no, no, no. That was that was in my third year. Yeah, yeah. My first, my first year, I was only doing about like six hours per day. Um, so oh, okay. like she, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And my yeah, my first year, I wasn't I wasn't doing. Uh, I didn't do two hundred and fifty deals in my first year. Um, uh, my first year, I only did about fifty deals. And second year, that's when I really kicked it into the to gear. I really started working really hard in my second year. And that's when I started probably working about 12 hours a day. I stopped, you know, in my first year, I was probably turning my phone off at five o'clock at night, wasn't working Saturdays and Sundays. And I noticed like I wasn't getting the results that I wanted. So once I actually started working 12 hours a day, every single day, then that year, my after my first year, I did about 250K in commission and closed about 180 deals. But my third year, that's when I really picked up the pace. And I'm not even joking. I was basically right when I woke up in the morning, you know, I'm on my phone, I'm getting to my texts, my emails, my phone calls. And I do that up until I go to bed. And it was probably about 16 hours. Now, obviously, you know, I'm eating, you know, dinner and, you know, maybe going to the shooting range or going on dates. And I was like doing stuff, obviously. So it wasn't straight 16 hours. But yeah, that's when it, everything really changed for me when I started treating this as like, like my own business. And I started devoting all of my energy into it. Um, that's when everything changed for me. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so, you know, this year, I mean, last year you mentioned, um, you know, doing, you know, 240 sides. What's the, uh, what, do you, what do you think the potential is um, in, in, in this, this type of market? How, where, how do you scale this? Oh, that's a great question. So, that kind of leads me into what I'm doing now in 2023. So this year, you know, I did hire an assistant. Um, I hired two agents, not really hired them, but they're helping me with my deals and I'm giving them a certain portion of the commission. Um, so this, this is actually how I'm planning to scale it. 
is I have an assistant doing certain day-to-day -day tasks for me. And then my two agents, they're each covering a certain area. So in Florida, we have Broward County, which is like the Fort Lauderdale area. And then Palm Beach County, which is like the Delray, Boca, West Palm area. So I have them helping me in those two counties right now. So my whole mindset is, you know, if I can do, you know, let's say on average, because with 240 deals last year, it's about 20 deals um, per month on average. If I could do 20 on my own, if I have two agents helping me, I'm hoping that each one of them can do 20 on their own. Um, so this way, you know, total, it would be 40 deals. Now, obviously I'm not keeping hundred percent of the commission anymore, but I think I can still make, you know, the same amount of GCI as I did uh, last year by having multiple agents working under me. And, and I'm kind of like guiding them, like feeding them business, feeding them leads, helping them with the listing agents. And this way, if I have enough agents, let's say I, I get, you know, another, you know, two agents under me, then this way I would have four agents. Then I would actually double the GCI that I'm doing. If I had four agents, um, you know, let's say I was giving them 50, 50 or something like that. Um, this way I would double it. And then instead of making half a million last year, just from mainly rentals, then I could make a million dollars uh, from rentals having agents under me. So that's the way I really plan on scaling the rental business. And then as I was talking about before, all these renters, they're going to turn into buyers. About 95% of all the renters I had, they always tell me the same thing. Yeah. At the end of every walkthrough, I ask them, do you want to buy a house within the next one to three years? And they all say, yes, they all want to buy a house. So I started my uh, CRM, you know, my KV core constant contact, and I'm sending out a weekly email now to all of my clients that I've worked with in the past. And I'm trying to convince them, you know, it's a good time to buy now and it's going to be a better time to buy within the next year or so. So stay in contact with me. Let me know when you want to buy. So in my mind, you know, scaling my my previous business last year, if let's say I have my two agents now and then I get another two agents, I could be making about double a million dollars, you know, just from the rental business alone. That would be scalable, obviously. And that's just South Florida. I'm not even talking about getting agents in other territories. Um, and then all of the renters that I'm working with, let's just say even, you know, 20% of them start buying a house with me, you know, moving forward. Let's just say 2024 in the market softens up a little bit. If I did 500 deals and I have 20% of them, that's about a hundred, um, you know, renters that are going to turn into buyers. And the average commission down here is about $10,000 for a house sale. So if, I, I don't know if this is going to work, but if I can get, a hundred buyers, you know, plus my rental business, that's an extra million dollars just from the buyers. Plus, let's say another million dollars from the rental business. If I have four agents under me, I mean, that's in my mind, how I scale this is, is doing exactly that. Oh, awesome. How much, how much money do you spend on advertising um, at this point? <laughs> It's going to blow you away. Um, almost nothing. Um, ba basically zero. Um, because if you that, do, that's Facebook what I was asking. Because Mm -hmm. it, it, it's crazy because Facebook marketplace is free. Um, they don't charge you. So like there's, if you do Facebook marketplace, when you're posting these listings, these rental listings, you could even do it for purchases as well. Um, there's no reason why you can't do it for purchases. Um, but Facebook doesn't charge you anything. It's just, it's basically like you're listing your car or like, you know, uh, a baseball glove or whatever, whatever you're putting on Facebook marketplace, Facebook doesn't charge you for that. Um, it's, it's free. It's kind of like Craigslist. So I don't really have to pay anything in advertising right now. You know, there's sites like Zillow. So if I want to go on Zillow, they charge you, you know, maybe like $10 per listing or some, whatever, whatever it is, maybe a hundred bucks a month. Um, but yeah, the advertising is basically free. It's basically nothing. So you would think, you know, you have to spend thousands of dollars. Like if you want to be a premier agent, on realtor.com, you got to spend, you know, upwards of a few thousand dollars per month to be a premier agent. But for this, any broker advertise strategy for these rentals, it's basically free. Wow. Well, that's awesome. And I, I suspected it was going to be fairly, uh, fairly inexpensive, if not, if not free because of what you described earlier. But, um, you know, you, I look at, you know, a lot of, a lot of top agents, um, you know, P and L, you know, they're, they're spending, you know, 10, 15% of their overall GCI on advertising. And when you start wow. to do splits and assistance and all the other stuff, you know, it, it, uh, you know, it can be a little bit tougher to sort of figure out how that's going to actually be profitable. But if your cost to advertise um, is zero or close to zero, 
um, from a cost perspective, it certainly makes it easier to sort of think about it from scaling the business and if you're building that pool of uh, buyers. So would you recommend, I mean, if this, this type of opportunity exists in other marketplaces, what, um, what was it that made you successful at this? I suspect that you're, that as far as I can tell, one of the most successful in this strategy, but are there others that are really successful with this strategy as well? Yeah. So I've talked to a bunch of it. Yeah. I teach like these um, EXP world, uh, you know, icon series, success series, and, and I, I do some of those. So I have a lot of agents reaching out to me from all over the country, um, sometimes all over the world. And I've, I've, I remember one in particular in Massachusetts, she said she was the, you know, number one rental agent in Massachusetts. And I asked her, you know, how many deals she's doing. And I think she was doing about 10 or 15 or so per month. Um, so yes, there are other agents that are successful doing this model. And she was doing basically the exact same thing I was doing, like, like literally exactly the same thing. Um, so yeah, there are other agents doing this, but, but it's very, very few and far between like I'm on Instagram now. I'm just starting to do like a social media push right now. And I only have like 2000 followers on Instagram. Um, it's at the Andy Coleman. So if anybody wants to follow me, definitely, um, follow me on Instagram, but yeah, I, I have agents reach out to me all the time on Instagram right now. And they're telling me that they're trying to do this strategy and some of them don't have any success. They're like, you know, we're, we're, we're not getting many leads coming in or, or we're getting too many leads coming in and I'm overwhelmed and I don't know how to get back to them. Like a lot of them don't really know exactly what to do with this strategy. Like, yes, you might be able to get leads coming in, but they don't know how to capitalize on it and really scale it up. Because first of all, um, there's no way I could have done, you know, 240 deals last year if I didn't have my systems in place. Uh, if I wasn't organized and I didn't have everything, like I have, I have Excel spreadsheets, you know, Word documents with scripts. I have clipboards in my phone, note sections. I mean, multiple note sections where I can go in there and copy and paste things, you know, like like instantly to where I, I don't have to sit there and type a response over for 100 leads. I can just copy and paste a certain response and literally get back to a hundred leads within 10 minutes. Um, so like there's little things like you have to create these systems and you have to be super organized and efficient if you want to scale. Like that's the thing you, you, yes, you can do a few deals per month, but it's going to become so, you know, my, my, my best month, I think I did about 30 rental deals, uh, maybe one house sale in 30 days. And to do that, you know, I mean, it's just, you're, you're getting 30 text messages per hour. You know, I'm, I think I talked to on average, maybe like 200, 250 people per day. Um, it's just, it's just like chaos. Like <laughs> there's just, it's just so much right. confusion and chaos coming in. Awesome. Well, you may want to check out the, the, one of the podcasts I just recorded earlier that'll come out the ninth with Darren James and some of his systems. One that comes to mind is Scipio. I don't know if you've heard of it, but he's uh, he's using that for a lot of uh, text message automation and and communication. So, um, oh. just just a, a, something that I think you might uh, find find a value. One piece of advice for EXP agents: what would it be? Oof, um, I would say it's the amount of effort that you put into it. So, um, my main advice, my main advice would be. Focus all your effort into this. You know, don't turn your phone off at five o'clock. You know, I know a lot of people have families. I don't have uh, kids right now. I just have a serious girlfriend. So, you know, she's a business owner. So she lets me work as much as I want to because she works a lot. So if you have the capability to, you know, I say put your all into it. You should be working from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed. If you want to be very successful, like you can make a good living. You could be making a hundred thousand dollars a year, you know, by working eight hours a day. But if you want to reach that next level, you know, if you want to reach that half a million, million dollar in gross commissionable income coming in, you really have to put 100% of your effort into this. And I would say focus on rentals. Um, that's the biggest thing where 99% of agents won't touch a rental at all. I think you even mentioned, you know, when you were, you know, really working hard in, in real estate, you weren't doing rentals at all. And most agents feel the exact same way. They don't want to touch them. They don't want to do them. They see this big, pretty $10,000 commission, $15,000 commission. If you do a house sale, whether you have a buy or a listing side, whatever it is, 
And then they see these rentals and they're like, oh, I'm only making, you know, 1000 1500 2000 3000 dollars on a rental. But that's not that's the wrong mentality because you can do, you know, two, three, four, five rentals in the same amount of time and effort it takes to do one house sale. So you can stack them up and do a tremendous amount of volume. And then all your renters are going to turn into buyers anyway. So you're building a long term business within, you know, uh, five or 10 years. If you do you know, let's say a thousand rentals in your first five years. And then your next five years, you can take all those thousand renters and then you could focus on, you know, turning them into buyers. And then over the next five years, you can turn all those buyers into sellers. So it's like a longer term strategy, but you could make, you know, a multi seven figure business just by focusing on renters in the beginning stages of your career and then go to the buyers and then from the buyers go to the sellers. So I personally think, you know, for any newer agents or agents that are struggling right now, because it's a tough market right now. You know, the interest rates are what, like six, six and a half percent right now. Um, a lot of people don't want to buy right now. So you're, you're, you're out there, you're lost. You don't know what to do with your time. If you have the capability and capacity to do rentals and work with tenants, trust me, they need help right now because it's tough for them too. They're still, we're still in like multiple offer situations on a lot of these rental properties because nobody wants to buy right now. So my number one suggestion is if you can get a commission with renters, start focusing on renters. Do any kind of strategy that you want to get leads coming in. I suggest if you don't have any kind of any broker advertised strategy like I do, reach out to listing agents in your MLS and just simply ask them, hey, can you give me permission to list your property? That's all it takes. Can I put it on Facebook Marketplace or Zillow? And can I list your property and try to get you a tenant? You know, if you reach out to a hundred different agents, I'm sure, I'm sure at least half of them are gonna say, yes, great, you know, uh, do that for me. And obviously, you can build a pipeline of listings by reaching out to listing agents and then get leads coming in every single day and then basically replicate the exact same strategy that I'm doing right now. Awesome. Awesome. Well, hey, Andy, this has been a lot of fun. Lots of really unique um, clues and ideas for success here. Uh, and uh, you mentioned uh, being able to reach out to you on Instagram. I think you're also on TikTok. Also, you got a YouTube channel. Uh, so oh, a lot yeah. of places to see what you're see what you're up to. Uh, again, thanks for jumping on and sharing with our audience. Uh, and with that, Absolutely. thanks everyone. Yep, thank you so much, Glenn. Thank you everybody. Follow me on Instagram. It's at the Andy Coleman. Follow me on YouTube. It's just Andy Coleman. And um, yeah, if you guys need anything at all, reach out to me, and I'd be more than happy to help. Thank you so much, guys. Bye.